Ben. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the GEST challenge powered by Dota Gigabyte Team and presented by Beyond the Summit. Of course, it's all been organized by Dota Talk, so a big shout out to them. But, well, we're well underway with the draft here. The teams are drafting quickly. I did have to grab my coffee, so we did miss the first few picks. But we are here in time to scope out the draft. And, I mean, the main thing here to look at is this first stage ban, PA. We saw some fan We've seen Phantom Assassin on the rise lately. Uh, Winter and I were talking about the hero a bit the other day. And with the dagger critting, as well as the, the invasion just continuously being buffed, it's now up to 50% evasion at max levels. PA has continued to be stock rising as a carry. She she can go for more of a hard carry build with the Battle Fury, can gank fairly early on with the phase drums, can gank even if she's going hard carry as well. And, well, we've seen a lot of teams prefer this hero, so it gets banned immediately in the first stage by Vici. That is that is not something I've seen before. Maybe this happened yesterday when I was not casting. We're rebuilding the main studio downstairs with the conclusion of the summit. And, well, good news is it should be ready. Hoping to do an episode of In the Studio in about 10 hours. So some finishing touches on that. I'll be looking to put them in during the breaks here. But with that being said, guys, game one is underway. And... Well, it was a first oh, overall team. pick, Lycanthrope. So LGD grabbed that. We've seen a lot of teams banning the Lycan when they're on Dire, uh, particularly in the Chinese scene as of late. You've seen very few teams banning the Lycan when they're on Radiant, which is quite a change from a, a month or so ago, even a few weeks ago, when everybody was insta-banning Lycan <laughs> if they were on the Radiant side. But uh, it does get picked up by LGD. The reply from Vici is a quick Naga invoker, so they get... Well, we'll have to see how they want to run the Naga. I Often when I see Vici, they actually play the Invoker with Silar, and it'll be... If Silar's playing it, it's normally more of your Carry Invoker. That's your, your Midas, Necro 3, Safe Lane Farming, Quas Exhort Invoker. But they can run it for Super as well. And generally, if he's the one playing the Invoker, we'll be a Quas Wex. We'll probably see him go mid. So I'm curious to see what style he brings to the table, but I'm leaning towards the Quas Wex Invoker for Super, and then something like the Naga Siren being played for Silar in the safe lane. They also get an H Apparition here, very strong support, and it does lend itself more towards the Quas Exhort Invoker. Really nice combo, the H Apparition all the Sunstrike. Uh, you can easily burst down heroes like Lion if they're off on their own. So, hmm. I guess it could go either way. And the other option is, of course, the support Naga. It's something we don't see too much of nowadays, but uh, it's it can still be strong. She's still a very tanky support, and uh, a nice frontliner. The main issue is just finding your levels. She's a bit of an awkward roamer uh, with the nerfs to Riptide as well. She's not as scary at zoning out enemy offlaners. So we'll see what they want to do. Hope you're all having a fantastic evening. Winter will be joining me, uh, hopefully for game number two. But he is actually getting his visa. He's going to the international, uh, his US visa, as the coach for Alliance. So very excited for my buddy, Chan. But uh, he won't be here for game one as a result. So... Well, let's see the draft unfold a little farther. I like the Naga pick against Lycan. Net's really good against Lycan. The Song of the Siren's really good. If he BKBs, you Song, net him, and then your team can focus him down. If he doesn't have BKB, you could just Song and try and jack the Aegis if he's going for a, a sneaky roast. So, Naga matches up well against Lycan, and so too does Axe. This is a, a very fearsome lineup from Vici. They can run the Axe uh, in the aggressive tri lane. Ancient Apparition Axe plus one. Naga's not really the best partner here with the Ancient Apparition, so I'm thinking what Vici might do is run a safe lane Invoker, solo mid Naga, and then a tri lane Axe. And if they do that, they have Ten Sunstrikes coming from the top lane, they have the Naga Siren just farming mid and Five doing her thing working towards the Radiance, and Axe Ancient Apparition plus one, some sort of good setup here, like a Shadow Demon, maybe a Bane, would be the He's perfect combination to shut down this Lycan in lane. That's where if LGD expect it, they'll need to they'll need to anticipate LGD this one, and we may see them do dual lanes. Maybe they run like the Lycan Lich in the off lane potentially. Uh, they can run they can run a dual lane mid. The Lion maybe roams a bit. Let's see what their last pick's gonna be. But just matching up try on try is not gonna be a winning proposition for LGD, especially not if the Lycan's in the tri lane. If he goes, that's the other thing they could do is they could run the Lycan mid, and he does pretty well against Naga. But yeah, we'll see what they want to do. Just sipping my coffee here, waiting for these final few bands to come out. We've got a, a Puck ban from Vici Gaming. Five seconds remaining. And that would fit LGD well. They need some more like team fight crowd control. Ember Lion's not the most reliable. In terms of team fight, LGD's already banned a lot. They've been out the Tide, the Enigma. We've seen team fight style lineups really come into vogue as of late, and 
Well, on that, you, and to the point where EG's even first picking heroes like Enigma, which were ignored a month and a half ago or so. Vichy will then go for a Witch Doctor. So they do get a range support, and this looks to be that aggressive tri lane with the X. H Apparition X, Witch Doctor, extremely high first blood potential. X can be played as a support hero, but it's not going to... I'd be very surprised if they did that this game, considering their lineup. So, yeah, I think it'll be the Tri-Lane X, aggressive Tri-Lane, Invoker, Safe Lane, Naga Mid, and they're going to put a lot of pressure on this Lycan, or whoever's bottom. If you're LGD, you probably look to dodge that. You can put the Lycan Mid. You can go aggressive dual lane with Lycan Lich. Hmm. The problem for LGD is they don't really have anyone who's elusive right Like now, like... Any of these heroes before level 6 can just easily be caught by the Witch Doctor cast. You follow up with Berserker's Call, and you're pretty much dead to some Chilling Touch right clicks. So, it's going to be scary. The other thing Vici could do is potentially put the Naga in the tri lane and run Axe as a solo. Axe is exceptionally good against certain melee heroes. He does very well against Lycan and lane, as mentioned. Uh, so, they'll probably just want to move the Axe wherever they expect the Lycan to go. But if it's like a Lich, Lycan, dual lane, then... Lycan will still get his farm, and the axe will be a bit deprived in the lane. Well, the draft continues, boys. What's LGD going to do? They need kind of a team fight specialist here. Somebody who can be a durable offlaner in terms of who's available. There's Centaur. I think Centaur is a pretty solid choice here. The laney might be a bit of an issue, but in terms of mid-game offering, he is he's comparable to what the Puck or the Tide would have given you. Mm, other than that, there's Five not much. I mean, you could go for more of a ganker like Marana, but uh, they'll go Quap. Okay, LGD taking this draft a different direction, and it seems Vici will be uh, about as surprised as I was, as they were banning a totally different direction with the Puck. Well, the cats are now out of my room, guys, so I can actually focus. They were uh, they were being a bit of a nuisance. Hmm. Ah, delicious coffee. So, draft's complete. Vici really wanting to put the pressure on the Lycanthrope. It will be a Silar Naga Siren and a Super Invoker. So, mm hmm, interesting. As mentioned, both Silar and Super have played the Invoker for Vici. We'll see how they want to lane it. Normally, if it's a... Oh, Winter's not with me. Yeah, let's let's get rid of that. But just abandon me in my moment of need. Boots first, Invoker. Okay, let's see how they want to lane this one. It looks like Silar is going mid, rushing the bottle. He's only got the single pull Tango, so it'll be a Naga mid. Probably Super will go safe lane, and Vici will go aggressive. Mainly Super just a bit worried about some early pressure on his lane. Maybe expecting LGD to send their tri lane top. and He's expecting them to try and dodge, it looks like, with these boots first. Can be pretty effective just for rushing phase boots, uh, depending on what hero you're matched up against. But obviously, your CS will suffer if you're in a 1v1. So, well, the picks are snapped up, and we'll introduce the teams now. Vici Gaming, they've got ROTK Sama playing that axe in the offlane. Fenrir on the Witch Doctor. FY, your Ancient Apparition. Silar going to be going mid as the Nagi's been pulled two tangos, rushing the bottle. And Super will be the safe lane of Hooker. Has not skilled anything yet. You'd really like to have the artillery support of Sunstrike for the tri lane, but. With the boots first, generally we see a Quaswix build, so leaning that way a bit, but and that's normally the style Super prefers as well. For LGD, we've got Didi on the safe lane line. He'll be joined by Shaotuji or Rabbit on the Queen of Pain, so safe lane Queen of Pain, and DDC on the Lich. Lin will go mid as the Lycan, and that puts Yao into the off lane Ember. Okay, so I actually like this for LGD. They pick up a farmer for the safe lane who's elusive. That was something... I mentioned they didn't have. Ember is elusive once he hits six, but in the laning stage, very the squishy, quite killable. So, Queen of Pain fills that niche, and with the Lich Denies, if they're try on try, the Lich Denies can turn the tri lane, as long as your carry is elusive. But, well, it looks like they may just go dual lane, so the main target here will be DD. If he ever gets caught, he is going to be absolute food. RTK will come in and start cutting the wave immediately. He'll get some spins off here on Shatuji. They get some Pale First Trouble, but backup is coming. They've got Chilling Touch available if they want to skill it. Haven't skilled anything just yet. Meanwhile, mid, DDC on the move, and they're just, they're diving here. They're going to cut the wave. Now go back for DD. He does a Boots first, though. Uh, very important for DD. 
If he didn't have early boots, he'd actually be first blood. Because Lion's base move speed, I believe, is 280. Something, it's it's quite low. It's a below average, and Axe could just easily just run him down. Meanwhile, I'll go to the tower. It's shenanigans. Rabbit's being dove, and in the meantime, DD can't get there to help him. Well, who's diving whom is the question. Fenrir is now the one who gets caught. He gets shadow struck. The tower's auto attacking. This is going to be an awful first blood if he doesn't get back up soon. And DD, he smells blood in the water. He wants to find this kill. Fenrir's trap. Fenrir is going to feed. Oh boy, that was not what they intended. Not at all. He went so deep for that. And he's not going to kill the Queen of Pain by himself. Oh my, that is that was not the game plan, boys. That was a that was a confirmed confirmed overextension there by Vici. And the thing is, even if he had gotten the Queen of Pain low, she still has blink, so you're not gonna kill him as Witch Doctor solo. They, that's where they need the Ancient Apparition X to be there. Just a bit impatient from Vici. Not on the same page. But yeah, I love I love this boots first lion, as we see Shot 2G might get caught. No, he'll just, he'll blink away, and then he goes back in on Fenrir. RTK waddles out of the trees, but with Queen of Pain already being level 3, this is not going to work. They have very little reliable lockdown. You've got a cask into a call, and in order to make that happen, they've got to be, either it has to bounce, or you've got to be very close. So barring that, Shoutuji, he levels up the Shadow Strike. He's just going to try to harass these supports out of the lane. I don't think it would work that well without the first blood, but with the first blood, he's got boots. And you look at these supports. This entire trial lane, the only hero that has them is X. Oh, this is a, this is just a total mess for Vici. They'll go on the quad, but eh, you can't catch her. She'll go back in on Fenrir. The Shadow Strike and the auto attack does half her damage, uh, half the Witch Doctor's HP, and oh, we'll be forced back. You know, top lane, they have caught out Super with the dual lane. This invoker's in all kinds of trouble. He doesn't have level three yet. Can't skill up Wex, and thus he will go down too. LGD just. Easily handling Vici Gaming here. They're not even having to work for it. Yeah, Queen of Pain is really... This is a really nice niche pick for this lane. Oh, they might find Didi now. Finally, they get the opening with the call, and, well, Didi's gonna go down. Will anyone be traded is the question. Battle Hunger's deployed. It's only level 1, though. It's a bit underwhelming. And they're actually rotating super down bottom. He's decided he can't lane against the Ember Lich, and he's right. He's only level 2. And a Searing Chain Slight, Slight of Fist means he's he's dead. It's so a level 2 Searing Chains, that's a 2 second disable, you fought up with a Frost Nova. A uh, Frost Blast, rather, excuse me, and, and he will go down. So, eh. The problem is it's a level 2 Invoker. What's he actually doing here? He can, he can make Cold Snap and maybe set up a kill. He's even shown himself in lane. They're not even trying to hide it. Their only goal right now is just to pressure the tower. And they will Cold Snap Shao Tuji, but he blinks away. We'll be absolutely fine. And the problem right now for Vici is they may take a tier 1, but they're going to be extremely underleveled. Lich is level 3. Queen of Pain's level 3. Actually, let's just bring up our level chart. Where, where is that? There we go. Still having trouble getting used to my old hotkeys. Use that dedicated observer account for so long. But yeah, they the level discrepancy is pretty absurd. They have two level 5 heroes and two level 3 heroes, and Vici Gaming only have one level 5 and two level 3, so... Well, you look at that experience graph, they're down a thousand at only four minutes in. Some of that is Lich Deny Shore, but it's also the time by the Invoker spent roaming. And this means Ember. His nukes are scary. He's gonna be doing a lot more chip damage than he normally would. Nice Observer Ward is gonna spot out FY, and now he's on the run. RTK could come in for a nice Berserker's Call, but he needs some good RNG here! Is he gonna get it? Where's those spins? No spins. Now he might just feed. There's a Shadow Strike ready. RTK on the retreat out. But with a Shadow Strike, he's not getting out of this one. Now the Lich nukes him. The stun's there to follow it up. And LGD are just running a freight train right through Vici. One more auto tech will bring him down. He almost lives, but in the end, I think the poison got him there. And now Super returns stop, but he's level 2. He can't lane against this Ember. Ember can easily dive him away from tower and go for the kill. Hmm... Actually, maybe not. He's gone Slight of Fist here in Chains Max. He skipped the shield entirely. Very unusual, especially against this nuke heavy of a draft. And now they'll dive on DD. Well, Witch Doctor will try, but he's got no backup for this. And it will be Quaspex at the end from Super. He's decided he's not going Quas Exhort with the amount of pressure he's under, if he was ever considering it. The pressure, the one here that's doing well, and I guess the key for Vici at this point, will have to be Slylar. He's 37 and 4, he's 
basically getting free farm mid. But LGD have a pretty good lineup to deal with Naga. At least in terms of killing off the illusions. They have a lot of AoE nukes from Queen of Pain. They have a natural Orchid carrier in her as well. And if you get an early Orchid, you can just keep on ganking the Naga before she gets her Manta. And uh, right around the time when the Radiance, maybe the Boots of Travel come out. Look at it go! Can they get off the call on Rabbit? Yes, they can! Give him the chop! Oh, he doesn't have it yet, but he can he can give him the spin anyway and, and down go. I didn't know he wasn't level 6, I just really like saying give him the chop. Condolences if you don't like that. They will go in Silar mid, the wolves are hanging out, but there's actually no ultimate. silar has been greedy! He hasn't skilled his ult, and he's gonna go down another crit by the DD like it! He's got no points in net. No point in the ultimate. It's such a greedy build from Silar. Oh my goodness. You know, he figured with his team quad laning bottom and the fact that there's an ember top that LGD would just be content to farm. And he just he just entirely skipped it. Speaking of which, he's maxed the illusions, but uh, we've yet to see him actually stack any camp. It's a little bit unusual. Normally if you go mid as the Naga, you'll, you'll at least start stacking the camps with the illusions by this point. Uh, or just farming them straight up, which, to be honest, I didn't see if he had been farming them, but... Uh, looking at a CS, 44, 7 minutes. It's up to 1900 gold, so... He's still on a pretty good pace here for an early relic. They will rotate around top lane. Work for Yao, but the issue is they don't have the best lockdown for the Ember Spear. They can go with an EMP cold snap, but he just sips out. And the clarity will be cancelled. Boink! That's a pain. Still, though, how does Vici kill Ember? They need a blink on Axe. That's the most important thing for them. Later on, they can go for a Hex on him. Super, but that's looking... I mean, the way his game started, maybe even like 30 plus minutes into the game. Perhaps more, so... It's the Axe blink that's really the key, and he will have it in a fairly reasonable time, considering they went aggressive trying. Only 23 CS, but sitting 2-1. and one. And they've got the early tier 1 mid. Or, sorry, bottom lane. So, that'll help him secure the blink a bit faster, and... Well, once RTG hits Blink, they need to start ganking. Go for the Lycanthrope. Speaking of the Lycan, level 8. He's got Vlad's money if he wants to buy it. Almost. He's got the Mask of Death. The Basilius nearly complete. RTK. Is he going to dive this? No, not just yet. But he will get caught up by the Ember Spirit now. There's no points in Flame Guard. The chase isn't that good. But he's got a haste anyway, so there's there's no running him down with that. No follow-up was available, and, well, for the time being, Vici Gaming, they just need to get their levels up now. RTK, he drops his, drops his Tranquil Boots, he's gonna try and finish this camp, he's, he's begging for the creeps to give him a spin. Give him a spin! RTK, no luck! No luck! Okay, now he gets the spin. But he still doesn't have his blink. And another death from Silar. He actually even used the ultimate. Did he cancel it? He must have just died right as I moved the camera there. So he skill first he doesn't have his ult when he needs it, and then he skills it and uses it, and still dies. I guess the finger and the chain frost had already gone off before he could use the song, and uh, against Lion that's understandable. He gets off the first disable, he hexes you, and well, he gets in range for the impale, and then you're probably not using any spells before your death, so. That's, that's unfortunate. The, that's two deaths for the Naga, and she's the key. The Naga was the only hero that got good farm in the lanes. The Invoker got completely shut down. The Trilane got a kill or two here or there. They took a tier 1, but it was an expensive tier 1. And as a result, we see LGD way on top. 2,000 gold up, 5 to 6k experience up. And they've got this aggressive ward here, but until the Axe gets blink, they ain't using it. And even once Axe gets blink, he's only level 5. He's got 3 points in spin. It's a level 1 Berserker's Call, a spell that... Scales quite well. The cooldown goes down by six seconds. That's that means you get off two instead of one in a longer team fight. So that can actually be a pretty big deal. Oh, Shoutuji diving, but he doesn't actually connect on the scream. And now Axe will pop a battle hunger, try and chase him, but that's not going to connect. Meanwhile, mid lane Yao, he's looking for an opening. Could have gone in for a slight searing chain, but he'll be content with this tier one mid. That's the bigger prize. It goes his way. He's now completed uh, just the basic items. Lycan's got a Vlad's out. And we'll see Silar rotate top. He's tired of all that pressure. 
RTK comes in, he has isolated Xiaotuji at the rune, but who's caught whom? There's no mana for the ultimate from Xiaotuji, and then the cast begins to bounce. Look at it go from Fenrir. This might be enough. They can chase him down with the tornado, but let it fly, it will connect, and we need some body blocks perhaps here. No, just the right clicks will do it. Super now getting caught by the Lich, but there's no chain frost. There's no way to follow this up. He'll try and pop the buckler. Good reactions by DDC, but not enough armor to keep DD alive from that final phase boots auto attack. Oi, oi, oi. What a bloody game. And you guys said Chinese Dota was a farm fest. 7 to 4 in 11 minutes. That's what I'm talking about. Actually, only the people who haven't watched Chinese Dota in a long time still say that. But, you know, you just see the comments here and there every once in a while. And it's like, I don't think you guys are watching the same games as me. Shout to you. Keep the pressure up. We see a lot of the Queen of Pain players prefer the have preferred the Orchid build lately. He'll blink in, and Silo doesn't have ultimate, but he whiffs the ult! Oh, Shoutuji! You gotta hit that one, man. You just gotta hit it. Now he's gonna run out of mana here. He has stick charges, though, but he gets caught by the tornado. Can he pop stick and blink out? No. He can't. He's caught and he dies, and he also doesn't get the Naga kill. Oh, that's that's really close. Top tower is under attack. Beautifully timed cold snap there, right as he was about to stick and wind up for the blink. He got cold snap, then he got caught by the tornado, and then he almost got the blink off, but got nuked down at the last second. They desperately needed that. And still LGD are getting the trades. Despite losing the Queen of Pain there, despite giving Naga most of the gold towards the relic, we will now see a blink dagger come out of the line. Before the X's blink, actually. As, uh, he did go down to the lion elsewhere mid lane. I think that was the blink being used for the first time. But yeah, they'll, they'll start connect diving the top lane. Yao's got the ultimate, and there is a song available. Will he take down? Oh, the searing chain damage, almost enough to finish him off. He barely survives. They'll throw out a tornado to cover his retreat, and LGD will back up. But again, the song's been forced out. Almost instantly, as soon as he shows up in the lane. Didi arrives yet again. This blink dagger on the lion, setting up all the openings. And now the pressure of the top lane. They've got the Lycan ultimate online, the wolves are cooling down, and with the Vlads here, they may not take the tower, but they can do a lot of chip damage. Even popping the buckler to, to maintain the push. Linda's a bit nervous, but then he realizes RTK doesn't actually have a blink dagger. So, he can't initiate. In fact, he's juking under the trees, he may get caught out here. Naga? Where's that song? Actually, still doesn't have a point in the net! Oh my goodness, there's just no lockdown! And they'll lose the axe to the chain frost. Enchant Fresh ult comes in, it will hit four, but where's the follow-up for this? It's just not a very scary lineup. There's just not much damage right now. Naga with no point in net, can't really set up for her teammates' abilities, and... Silar just has to stop dying. He cannot afford to die again with how much space the the Ember as well as the Lycan are getting. Whatever whatever it costs Vici at this point, they, they have to focus on securing this Naga's Radiance. But yeah, to go back to what I was mentioning earlier, we do see a lot of Queen of Pains preferring the Orca build versus Naga if you snowball a bit. You get the Orca quickly enough and you can just keep on killing him even when he has the Radiance. Sometimes you need a plus one depending on his item build, but... In this case, Siler's just going straight Radiance. He hasn't gone for the Reign of Aquila we often see. Uh, hasn't even gone for the casual Wraith ban, which sometimes players like Arteezy... Arteezy normally gets the Aquila first, but... Yeah, Shroud will go for the, the Necro book instead, so he'll go for a bit more of a split push build. And truthfully, the mana burn's pretty strong this game. Really good against Naga, and pretty good against Axe as well. But if you can stop Naga from having mana for ultimate, that can obviously instantly turn a fight. And once again, mid lane, Silo's being preyed upon. There is an ultimate. Shatuji, not gonna miss this one. He drops the ult, lets it fly, and then keeps on chasing. And he will get picked off by that last plink from the Queen of Pain auto attacks. So LGD just starting to secure the map. They'll push the top lane in. They'll look to take this tier 2, even with the HF apparition ultimate lane, just casually pops his ult, and he'll keep on choppy away at the tower. The wolves are here. DD blinks in, he's looking for a hex. Ah, can he get in range? Just out of range. Meanwhile, RTK is just well, he needs his blink, guys. He's got it now, but what's he gonna do with it? Blink on Axe is always strong. Even later on, you pop in, you blink and you call, and you get the instant lockdown, and you're just tanky with with the additional armor from Berserker's Call. So it could be an important item for them. It's their only initiation right now. I mean, they're, they're using Naga Song purely defensively at this point, and they need to do so, given how many times Silar's died, and just the, the importance of him getting Radiance this game. So it'll be up to the Axe. Does RTK find good openings? 
We'll keep our eyes on him. He hasn't shown the blink dagger yet. He can go in right now, but Super just gets incinerated. RTK blinks in. The call's not very good, and in fact, it's all up to the Witch Doctor. The cask is a bouncy, but he gets blown up. That's courtesy of a DDC Lich ultimate. And in the end, everybody drops low. The Lich barely escaping with a fraction of his health bar, but that's it. Yao continues the chase. No. He'll just zone them out while they take the tower. That's going to be four outer towers for LGD in 16 minutes. And the way to Roche increasingly lies open. Still, there's no real split push from the Naga. The Relic only just now delivered. All those deaths piling up. And I just want to point out that this lion for DD has a Blink Dagger and a Force Staff at 16 minutes. He's 2-2-6. Two, two and he's level 10. He's gonna have his level 2 ultimate before Naga does, I believe. Or around the same time. And that's a solo mid Naga. Yeah, they were running the dual lanes, but nonetheless. HF Rishnal flies forth, but Roche has already fallen. That goes the way of LGD, and they get the gold and the kill the kill bonus as well there, in addition to the Aegis. So now they pick up another Necro book. One for the Lycan. The Queen of Pain has completed her initial one, has the second recipe, and actually Shaotuji almost has a Necro 3. So you throw the double necro books Vichy Gaming's way, and Naga's just never gonna have mana. It'll be Mono Wars here, the the sequel to the Clone Wars, the Dota version anyway. And I, I think with the double necro book, Invoker is just not gonna be he's not gonna be able to stand up against these these necro creeps. It also increases Queen of Pain's killing potential dramatically. Not quite as good as an Orchid for here like Naga, because normally she can just insta song if you jump on her, but very good at killing off the other supports. That's a level 7 enchant apparition with 670 health. Food, RTK, uh, he can be killed off solo, but I wouldn't say he's food. It takes a bit longer to run him down. And Fenrir, food, 720 health, 2, two armor. Very squishy. The concern here for Vici is... I don't think LGD is afraid of going late against them. They have tons of AoE, as I mentioned earlier in the cast, to deal with the Naga illusions, and they have good split push. They have Lycan who can split push, Queen of Pain who can counter push and also clear out the waves, Ember who can do the same, and Lycan can deal with Naga illusions quite effectively, and he's going for the build that lets you do that best with the Battle Fury. So, all things considered, I would say LGD, they're, they're not worried about this Radiance whatsoever. Obviously, they'd prefer to just keep the momentum flowing and not let the Naga get farmed, but... Should it slow down, they're in good shape. They can take it late. They could just siege the towers with the double necro book. Everyone except for the Naga will be bottled up in the Vici gaming base within the next five to eight minutes if they play it right. And as long as they do that, then you're playing a 5v1 effectively. Vici will not be in a good position there. Radiance Middle Tower is under it's a 12k attack. gold lead now, a 10k experience lead, and here comes round three of the push. They'll go for the bottom lane now. With this, they'll thoroughly limit Vici Gaming's map control for the Roshan. Meanwhile, Vici, split pushing the top lane, going for the, the tier one there, but Shatuji leaps in. He throws out a Shadow Strike, just trying to threaten Super. Super would be the other hero who can leave, go, I guess. Going Quaswex, he can run around invis with the, the Orchid and try and find pickoffs, but... I don't know, man. It's just going to be a late Orchid. These heroes are tanky. And Naga Radiance has been picked up, but if he actually kills these Necrobooks, he'll be in trouble. There was a slight no searing chains from Yao. And RTK actually blinks in. He wants to call these Necrobooks, get them off of the tower. Meanwhile, the Queen of Pain all comes in. Xiao Tuji leaps forward. That's two kills already. There's a song, but it's too late from Silar. Now the buyback from the Invoker. They know they have to turn this fight. Witch Doctor ult comes up bouncing. The Chain Frost was thrown out the Silar, not into the Witch Doctor. But it won't actually matter. It just keeps on bouncing from Hero. Super gets caught again. Remember, he just fought back. He will die again. Xiao Tuji rejoins the fight after the Aegis pops. And now they'll take Rags. LGD just throwing a... Just stabbing Vichy Gaming directly through the heart. With this aggressive push and snowballing the way to a 19-minute lane of Rags. And they're getting the Rags with an Ember. Ember, Queen of Pain, Lycan. Only one of these heroes is a strong pusher early on. They're so far ahead. They might lose Shatuji here, though. Aegis is down now, and, well, they need some backup. That's a three-hero disable coming out from Yao, and, well, it will be enough to actually keep the Queen of Pain alive. He barely survives for the time being. Ain't Chat Brishnal trying to connect, and it doesn't matter. The GGs have been called. He'll even dodge the ultimate. Just insult to injury from LGD. They make Vici look silly, and they'll take it in sub-20-minute fashion. 19-6, to 6, your final score. Yikes. What more to say? Just, that was just a thorough outplay from LGD. 
Some really big mistakes from Vici. You go back to the laning stage, Witch Doctor, Fenrir just getting caught way behind the tier 1 all by himself. He didn't have the tri lead with him, that was very questionable. We saw Super rotating bottom at level 2. I don't think there was much else he could have done top, so I don't necessarily disagree with the choice, but that just puts them in such a bind. He died to the, the Ember Lich, like just the way that LGD laned it. Item selections were really smart, line going for level 1 boots means it, it's just very hard to kill him, whereas normally... Axe could just run him down with superior base move speed and get off a call and then kill him from there. But yeah, I like the way that LGD itemized. They're, those level one items and the lanes, the lane assignments really sealed the deal. And the Queen of Pain pick was very smart. It's one of the few heroes that... Like, they could have gone for something like Marana, but Queen of Pain just is a better trading hero because you have Shadow Strike. So you can throw out the Shadow Strike and then right-click the supports a few times. You'll trade more effectively than if you're Marana who is inferior base damage. So... I like the Queen of Pain pick there, and it was a, a nice way to lane it from LGD. They'll take game one, guys. It is a best of three. You're watching the GST Challenge, powered by Gigabyte, and, of course, presented by Beyond the Summit. I'm LD. If you enjoy my casting, you can follow me on Twitter, at LD Dota. You'll be seeing a lot more of me over the next few weeks as the road to TI4 draws nigh. But with that being said, we'll take a quick break, guys. We will come back for game number two. Stay tuned.